Game Changers is made possible by I saw in a dream once A city full of people who are lonely No need for the nuances Of breakup texts and acting like there's nothing when it turns out it won't work out But we're not in the clouds And the city's crying now I don't know who we are anymore And I, I don't wanna leave But you know that you make me fall apart I leave you in the dark Baby, we don't need more clues But sometimes I wonder If you ever dream like I do I hate the ones that keep me up at night Where I see memories and never was is in my mind yeah. Why is it I see you every time I my eyes well, I don't know if I should go and get some therapy I study science read a book do more philanthropy but I'm hoping there's something I haven't tried so maybe I can fall asleep at night Baby, we don't need more clues But sometimes I wonder if you ever dream about cities full of people Just like me and just like you If I could ask them one thing I'd be asking them what to do And I don't know who we are anymore I had thought about going on a show like American Idol, but honestly, it all came down to just my dad. He was like, let's just try it. Let's just give it a go and see what happens. Can't hurt to try. And um, I went on and I auditioned and it kind of took off from like the start of it all. And it, it was so fast paced and I was just not used to it. But, um, you know, when you're in those types of situations where you're faced with um, something that's either going to change your life or, you know, you can just let it go. Like you have to make the decision whether you're going to commit fully or you're just, you know, you're, you're not. And in that moment, I just decided to give my like 110%. I was going to do this. I was going to go on American Idol. I was going to sing my butt off and hopefully, you know, hopefully it will, you know, something good will come out of it. And a lot more good came out of it than I ever thought would. Anytime you come off a, um, a show like the Voice or American Idol, um, you know, it's there's a lot of uh, requests for your time. A lot of, a lot of people that are after uh, performances, after um, just a few minutes with you. You know, there's you get tons of requests, tons of emails. So, man, I mean, in terms of being busy and being completely uh, inundated with stuff, um, you know, it's it's a lot a lot overwhelming. Not a little. It's a lot overwhelming. And uh, you know, the fact that you know it kind of all happened 
For Madison, you know, right when the pandemic was, was taking off and, um, and when things were shutting down, um, you know, that's tough because there's an opportunity um, for you as a person that, uh, that millions of people have seen over the last several weeks, uh, every week and have fallen in love with. There's an opportunity to go out and really make a name for yourself. So you're on the show, you were 16 and then like you did so well and then <laughs> pandemic happens. Mm -hmm. like, it was all what crazy. What happens after the show when the pandemic's out? Like that's, you're making hay time. Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't know what to do. I don't think the whole <laughs> world knew what to do. Um, but I mean, you know, kind of like you said, it's it's really all it comes back to the songs, you know? And, and if you got a good song, then you got a good song and it's, mm -hmm. it, it can take you places. And um, I think through COVID, I was I spent that time figuring out who I was as an artist, right? Um, especially coming off the show, doing cover songs and things like that. You don't really get a chance to explore who you are and like who you want the world to see you as, you know, and when you come off that show, I'm sure you know, the feeling is like you are like going every single day when you're on one of those shows, you mm -hmm. know, every single minute you're like, you know, doing something. And so to come off and like just do nothing was the hardest thing I'm for sure. me. You yeah. know, it felt like I wasn't I was like failing as a musician. Yeah, not taking you know advantage of the gift of yeah. being on a show. Exactly. Like that, I was right? like, my window of time and I can't do nothing. Well, now. I think so, you'll find that, uh, that it, it's going to end up serving you well. That yeah. time to really focus on you, focus on songs. What kind of artist do you want to be? What direction do you want to go? Those are tough questions to ask when you're riding on the back of a van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Believe me. Yeah, I bet. Are. So I I'm bet. excited to see. I'm excited to see what you do. I met so many amazing people while I was on American Idol. Um, and I stay in contact with a lot of them, but one in particular that I love, I love him. He's great. His name is Walker Burr and he's from my season. Uh, so we, we were contestants together. And um, Walker and I are very similar in a lot of ways. And I think it's because American Idol really kind of like shaped us as people. Cause we were both really young when we were on the show. And now we're both doing things on our own and pursuing music. You go zero to hundred in the matter of like a couple of TV episodes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing and it's terrifying and nobody in my life, not that people, not nobody closest to me on this earth know that feeling, mm -hmm. but you do, which is like this unique bond that I will hold like forever because it's mm, the, it same. feels like the start of everything for both of us. Definitely. You know what I mean? 100%. So I work with three amazing co-writers, Janine D'Souza, Kaylee McCarter, and Kim Krennic, and they are from all over the country. So we meet um, every week on Zoom. And so we write songs virtually, and it's been a lot of fun to get to know them and, and their life experiences, as well as write songs with them. It's been just, it's been great. Oh my gosh, hi guys, how are hi. you? Hi. Hi, how are you hi. doing? Hey Kenny, <laughs> how are you? Good, good. Hey, I got the new song you guys sent. I love it. You oh. did? Oh, that's so hey. awesome. I was introduced to music producer Kenny Lamb by my co-writer Janine. We met for the first time over Zoom and it was very, very cool to, to talk with him for the first time because he has so much experience under his belt and to be able to, um, you know, see that he was excited and in, in, in possibly working together on, on a project was very, very cool to me. Yeah, you know, I think it's really, it's doing a couple things for me. I think it really hits uh, the range thing that we're looking for with you, where you really can kind of do what you do well, in those big notes. But I felt like the verses are also in that uh, singer songwriter place where you can tell the story and, and it's more intimate. So it kind of gives us uh, the best of both worlds. We wanted to create this really empowerment uh, type of vibe for a song. And we were thinking in our head like a female James Bond or um, like Queen's Gambit, like different shows and stuff we were referencing to try and get in the right uh, state of mind to make this song. And I'm so, so excited that you like it. I think it turned out to be really epic. And, and we wanted it to be true to who you are so you could sing it and really, you know, believe what you're singing and mean it. And for years to come, you'll mean that, you know, is what we hope for. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like you really are this song. You're this kind of person. And immediately when we met you, we just knew it. To write with other women, you know, who, who understand what you're, you're talking about when you talk about it. You know, it's it kind of brings out a different side of, of songs and um, I think they really helped to kind of, I, I guess, empower me uh, to to feel confident to write a song like that. Yeah, when I saw Madison Vandenberg on American Idol, it wasn't her range or her power that drew me in. It was the way she connected with the music and with the lyrics, especially. She really can sell a lyric 
and in this business that's really almost everything. I do some songwriting uh, session work to where we get you uh, and Walker possibly yeah. in a room with some overheads okay. and maybe get you guys just talking about the songs you've been writing. Mm -hmm. It may not necessarily need to be a collaborative moment, right. but it could be something that's kind of just more laid back, casual, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a great thing to capture. Uh, and I may jump in with you guys and just uh, talk, you know, song and uh, kind of get a vibe for where you guys are riding. And yeah. Who knows, man? We'll start something. Hey, yeah. I know. Never know. That's how, that's how those things happen. Yeah. I know. He's such a different vibe than I am, you know, so it kind of matches really well. And yeah. excited to see what he's kind of got going on, you yeah, know? Yeah, see that chemistry that you guys have in that area. Yeah. So, have so you heard cool. him sing? Before? Just a little bit. It's a little bit on the show. I haven't heard him just like sing in the room. It's yeah. He's just great. He's just got it's like cool. one of those like super pure voices, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that are just like all you can like always just listen to. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know who to compare him to, but like Coldplay sort of. He's kind of got like a I guess a, I don't know kind of Coldplay vibe, like his yeah, voice exactly. itself. But yeah, That's it'll be cool. good. It'll be a good session. I'm well, excited. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh go, hey, this melody can go like this, so like this, and yeah, you can go, oh yeah. man, that'd be dope. Yeah. Even if it's not, just go with it. Yeah, I'll just go with it. <laughs> we'll fix it yeah, later, can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great, yeah. As music fans, we all want more of that feeling, that magic when a song and an artist really come together and something special happens. Making that happen and creating music in those kind of moments really takes a lot of effort. The music industry is built on collaboration. It really is the most collaborative business that I can think of. I like to put artists together and see what happens. I bet the cricket in my backyard doesn't care how he sounds when he sings. I bet the oak tree that shades my house doesn't mind that she has to wait for spring. I bet the bird Staring, comparing, trying to be wary All the colors of the cooler birds in town They're made to be, made to be Made to be exactly who they're made to be They're made to be, made to be So we'll watch and wait and see I was talking with Kenny for a couple weeks over Zoom about Game Changer and eventually I actually got the opportunity to fly down to Nashville and record it in person with him and Christopher Rowe at the iconic Blackbird studio. To be in Nashville for the first time, to be recording in such a historic music studio, to do all of that was like a dream come true to me. I just felt like everything was kind of coming together and lining up everything I've been working for for my whole life just started to actually come to fruition. Being surrounded by all of these incredibly talented musicians all the time is so inspiring and that's really what I really took from being in Nashville was uh, the vibe was just so creatively good. I just kind of really felt like Nashville was the perfect place to record Game Changer. It really helped the song be the best that it, it can be. When I approach recording a song, I'm definitely thinking about two things. I'm thinking about the artist and what what is gonna support what's great about this artist. And I'm thinking about the song mm -hmm. and what this melody and the feeling in the song is trying to say. Because mm -hmm. like we like we talked about, you know, earlier, you know, songs really are, are about how they make people feel. Totally. You know, it's yeah. that bigger feeling like what's going on here like I just want to crank it up and yeah, exactly. it's not always all the specifics it's just it's this just feeling that you know? vibe. Yep. yeah yep, yep. and uh, so when it comes to producing I think that uh, you know those both those things have to be working together so uh, you know melody is a thing and it's easy to step on a melody with parts in production if you're not careful mm -hmm. because you know we can all do a lot of cool things musically I work with some great programmers and we have these players that come in so you know, you hear the term serving, we serve the song, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what do we, what do we mean by that? And that's back to that intuitive thing of, okay, does this sound 
that I'm using, there's infinite possibilities. Mm -hmm. Does this sound that feels like the vibe here mm -hmm. after going through a hundred? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this the one that's, is it supporting the song? Is right. it, does it fit the palette? Does right. it fit this painting? Madison came in and was super professional about everything, um, which is, I guess, not what you're expecting necessarily with someone so young. But she came in and had her ducks in a row and made everything pretty easy from my standpoint. Just kind of let that note breathe a little bit rather than since you don't have to worry about singing the next line. When the pressure is high, you know, just kind of let it drift off. Kind of like it, I'll take you on when the pressure is high. Baby, I'm not... All right, just put a harmony on Okay, let's go to the harmony uh, part above. Pressure is high. Kind of like it, I'll take you away when the pressure is high. Baby, I'm not... It would be so rapid fire. He would, you know, press record and I would just start stacking all of the harmonies together. That was like, that was really challenging. But I think piano, honestly, was like huge in, in helping me do that because when you learn piano, you, you know all of the notes in any scale ever. Take you on when the pressure's high. Oh man, one more there. Kinda like it, I'll take you away. At one point I had too much stuff. There was too much going on. Yeah. And as I started stripping things back, the melody started speaking again. Right. And sometimes that's actually, I've noticed that that's something that happens uh, in the process, uh, almost by nature, that you have to go a little too far sometimes. Exactly. And then see. pull back. Exactly, yes. Yeah. I agree with that so much. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's so fun to like add different things yeah. and they oh, do yeah. sound good, it's, but then you yeah. sort of take it away and it just shines in a different way. You know? Yeah. yeah. We just open you up, up a track and just let you do a bunch of ad libs and we'll use some of them and move them around and give us little bits to work with. To, Spice it up here and there. Uh, feel free to be bold, just be crazy, do whatever you feel. Okay. Because we got plenty of mute buttons. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. And you might do something just fun, just in between stuff, you know, mm -hmm. answer little, little licks, little whatever you're feeling, just some cool ad lib stuff. And we'll do a couple times of those and grab a few things. There's this intuition aspect of being able to decide when something is right or, or not for the song. And it has to be an intuitive journey of saying, okay, I'm just gonna follow what feels right. And sometimes we can't put a, it's hard to, to give it a reason. It's just, it just feels right for the song. Mm -hmm. And you know, that process in songwriting, you're talking about how that those, you could put harmonies on a certain melody or not, or you could go with a certain lyric here and there. There's so many pieces of the puzzle, being able to Find, stay in that place of intuition, of letting the song speak to you, to get it out of the way enough to let whatever magic is in this idea and this melody speak to you and say, okay, I hear you. That just isn't quite right. I don't know why. I'd love it to be right because it's a cool idea, right. but to not be so married to the idea that you can't let it go. The song itself is like a, have you ever played with those, um, like, <laughs> this is dumb, sorry. Have you ever played with those like wooden, like wooden 3D puzzles? You know what I'm talking about? Where they like fit together in a certain shape or whatever? That's what a song feels like to me. I have to, like, I have pieces and I want to, I want to try them in different places and I want to feel it with my hands and I want to look at it from different angles and uh, throw it across the room when I'm angry. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's not working. And then... yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll take a song like that and I'll stay with it. And if it, if I can get it to the finish line, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll do some solo rights. But uh, if not, sometimes I'll get it to a point and then maybe I'll take that to someone I trust that I know I have chemistry with. And uh, that can be a good way to venture into co-writing, someone that gets you as an artist and you kind of bring something in that's kind of started and has your you know, DNA, your blueprint going on. And then they can come in and kind of capture you know, your sound and, and your vision for the song. Um, if you feel like you're stuck at a point, you think there's more there, you know, mm -hmm. and that could be a cool way. That might be, you know, a walk or something for you, you know, a way to approach that. It's like, let me find the right, you know, collaborator that, yeah. that knows where I'm going with this, yeah. where I, where I want to make records and how I want it to sound. Yeah. And kind of gets that world. It might expand a little bit, you know, but uh, you kind of have the, get the ball rolling with it, you know. Absolutely. The, the biggest challenge for an artist is to how to merge who they are as a person, who they are as a as a musician and an artist into a song, 
in a way mm -hmm. that starts to create something happening, it starts to create a, a sound, uh, a world of its own, you know, a feeling. There's a lot of layers to writing a song. You know, there is lyric, there is melody, there is this concept thing. Like, what do we write? What do we say? What's in this song? What's the concept in it? And that has kind of a more of a, you know, thousand foot view of the song, right? Yeah. And then there's how does it make someone feel, you know? And that's really, to me, what we're doing. Yeah. You know, we get into the lyric aspect and what we're saying. And melodically, we can do all kinds of cool things melodically. And that's a big part of it too. Mm -hmm. A lot of songs pull us in from the melody. Mm -hmm. Overall, you step back, it's how is this song making me feel? And I think as writers, if we are conscious of that as we're writing, it's like, okay, you know, we have to kind of police ourselves because a lot of this is very personal journeys, right? We're, we're at home, we're in a writer's room, we're in the studio, and we're creating art. And how we guide ourselves, if we're not in a co-writing situation, let's say, how we guide ourselves through the process will, be, will tell the tale. And that becomes layers of stepping back and saying, okay, what do I have here? You know, how's this, how's this melody making me feel? And being willing to step back and imagine ourselves as the listener. And that's been something that's helped me a lot. Dolly Parton wrote Jolene and I want to say, oh, I will always love you in the same day. She like wrote him on the same afternoon. It is a cosmic thing. I mean, songwriting is very esoteric. It's like, what, where does this all come from? You know, it's, and, and that's the nature of music. You know, there's just so much more in it than just what we call music. Exactly. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, history and soulfulness and people and connectivity going on through what music is. Mm -hmm. um, what's so cool is that we have a chance to do something that's our own, to do something different. And, you know, as you get into the craft side of songwriting, I think it's important to know that that's not getting into something technical that takes you out of the art to me. To me, the art and the craft work so well together. And like the, some of the great write, authors of books have said, to, to create or to write as human, to edit as divine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. That's, uh, that's awesome. a great quote. Yeah, that's cool. Oh man, I love that. Yeah, because we're all faced with it. We have, sometimes we get all the puzzle pieces on the table and it's just vibing. It's like, right. okay, I got to put a few things together now. It was literally like all day in the studio recording Game Changer. Um, it was so late and we had just wrapped up all of the vocals. So I had come into the studio to like, uh, you know, hear what we had recorded so far. And to hear that for the first time, like, it's just something I can't describe because your song is like, when you write a song, it's just like your child. And so you want the best care possible. And um, when I came out and I heard all of vocals from that day and, and all of the new production coming in, and it really just was, a uh, beautiful moment for me. Um, it was all coming together and I was exhausted, but it like, it woke me up immediately. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> I was looking around at everybody like, are you guys like hearing this? Like it, it was, it was so great. It was way better than what I thought it was, you know, ever, it ever could be. So um, yeah, as an, as an artist, I think that that day I will always remember because it was like, kind of like the start of a new journey for me after American Idol. It was like, okay, like this is cool. Like this is this is where I want to go. Like let's keep going on this. This is this is cool. You guys took the song to a whole nother level with just everything that you brought into it, and um, definitely really an amazing moment. Very shocked, but it was exactly the way that I had heard it in my head. I just didn't know how to do that, and you guys just like transformed it. You learn so much by each recording, and if you do learn and you take that with you that could mean that you want to adjust a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And because some artists find that sound a few records in. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's how I feel, yeah. sorry, that's yeah. how I feel. Like, yeah. I feel like I love what we're doing, but yeah. I feel like- Like it's going somewhere, It's going somewhere, somewhere, it's right. going somewhere yes. and we're gonna hit yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, and that's exciting. Yeah, I know. And that means you're not just, oh, I'm there and that's it, <laughs> yeah, we're done. Exactly. Yeah, it's, and exactly. that's, then we're always pushing. Yeah. Because you don't know what you might find. Exactly, and, you're still searching for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what's yeah. there to be found, yeah. And what you have in you. And I know you have so much in you musically, Mass, and you just have so much to say. And so, you know, it's. Uh, it's exciting <laughs> to be part of that ride. Throw out the dice, don't play it safe, cause I'll make my own rules and now there's nothing left to break. I'll be the one to run the game. Don't need someone to tell me how to play I don't wanna put you off, but I'm a 
Game Changers. The photo shoot for Game Changer had so many moving parts. Oh my God, so many. We had like four different looks and we had so many, you know, different styles that we wanted to try with the background and it was like crazy. With Madison now at her age and the camera presence that she's got in the practice, it's, it's crazy. Our first shot with her is just, you know, we were 10 frames and we had three album covers. It felt like all of the years that I've been working towards, you know, this goal of just being an artist, they were starting to pay off. Sunday at noon on CBS 6 and 6.30 p.m. on CW 15.